This video is about StyleGAN 2. StyleGAN generates great quality images using ideas like adaptive instance normalization and mapping network. However, it produces artifacts in the generated images. These artifacts can be attributed to the model architecture and training methods employed in StyleGAN. StyleGAN 2 addresses these problems by the by revisiting adaptive instance normalization and introducing what they call demodulation. They additionally introduce pathland regularization and modified network architectures for both the generator and discriminator, which results in high resolution images without any artifacts. Let's look at the revised network architecture, the novelties and results of StyleGAN2 in this video. Let's quickly recollect the StyleGAN architecture and its components before going into StyleGAN 2. The StyleGAN consists of four components. The mapping network, which encodes the lat latent noise Z into the space W. The W vectors and the are then fed into the affine transformation module A. The output styles of the module A are called Y. And these Y vectors, along with the features XI, are passed into the adaptive instance normalization layers of the synthesis network G. We additionally have a constant tensor of size 4 by 4 by 512 feeding the synthesis network. We have noise vectors added to the synthesis network through the affine transformation layer B. Here we can see some of the images generated by StyleGAN and the intermediate feature maps corresponding to them. The problem with the adaptive instance normalization operation is that it normalizes each feature map separately instead of the entire batch. When the adaptive instance normalization step is removed, these droplet artifacts disappear completely. Before looking into StyleGAN 2 architecture, let's group the architecture of StyleGAN into style blocks with each block receiving only one style vector. Let's first split the adaptive instance normalization block into its two parts, which are modulation and normalization layers. And then let's also include the weights and biases to the style blocks, which are W and B. As a next step to expanding the network, let's swap the places of bias addition with the normalization so that the bias now applies to the normalized features. For simplicity, let's also remove the bias and normalization applied to the constant input tensors. With this as style block as a starting point, the paper argues that the modulation layer simply acts as a scaling layer which multiplies the input with S. And the normalization layer as the layer which divides the output of convolution with the standard deviation sigma. Now, what if we combine these two operations together and bake them in with the convolution operation itself? We now arrive at what is called the weight demodulation proposed in the paper. Perceptual path length was a metric introduced in StyleGAN. In StyleGAN 2, they study the correlation between PPL and image quality. They show that the PPL directly correlates with the smoothness of the generated images. In this figure, you can clearly see that the image with low PPL scores make much more sense compared to images with high PPL scores. To further support this point, the paper shows experimental evidence on Elson CAD dataset with low and high PPL values. They also show results on Elson CAR dataset with low and high PPL values. Motivated by these observations, the paper proposes path length regularization as a solution to keep the PPL values low and to generate smooth images. Recollect that StyleGAN has a generator network G that takes as input the style vectors W. Now, any small change in the output image G of W with respect to the style vector W can be captured by a Jacobian matrix. We can multiply the Jacobian matrix with the outputs Y and compute a norm similar to L2 norm we use in standard regularizations. If we also want the network to contribute to this term, we introduce a learnable parameter A into this equation. 
Finally, we compute the mean of all the outputs to arrive at the path length regularization. We sum this regularization with the loss of the generator while trialing the network. And because this term is quite expensive to compute, they use this regularization only every 16 training iterations, and this is called lazy regularization in the paper. Progressive growing was introduced in this paper to improve the quality of images generated and the stability of training GANs. However, as shown in this figure, it introduces phase artifacts in the images. As the generated output phase changes in pose, local details like the teeth remain fixed in a position. To overcome these, the paper searches for better network architectures in Stale GAN 2. Let's have a look at the different architectures that are explored in Stale GAN 2. Commonly used architectures include skip connections, residual blocks, and hierarchical methods to improve neural networks. They experimented with three network architectures as shown here. First is to simply use skip connections from the generator to the discriminator. Second is to have a single skip connection from the generator to discriminator with up and down samplings. The third is to have residual connections in both the generator and the discriminator. As a general rule, they made three observations. Skip connections are best for generator networks, but not for discriminator networks. Residual network connections are best for discriminator networks, and residual connections are harmful for generator networks. Here are the main results from the paper using all the ideas we have just seen. The results are reported for the Flickr Faces HQ and Elson Carr dataset. This is a direct qualitative comparison of the images generated by StyleGAN and StyleGAN2. The images from StyleGAN2 look far better, smoother, and have much more variations. However, note that StyleGAN2 took 9 days to train on FFHQ and 13 <gasps> days to train on Elson Carr dataset with, with a DGX1 state-of-the-art machine with 9 GPUs. <gasps> StyleGAN is definitely compute intensive to train. Let's wait for GANs that take less time to train in the future. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel for similar videos like this in the future.